Hello, this is the second video on my chapter on the Universal House of Justice. Uh, as I said in the first video, my short history was originally published in 1996, so it obviously is dated for this chapter, and a slightly more up-to-date account uh, can be obtained in the relevant section of my Cambridge introduction. So this uh, chapter uh, has a number of um, sections, uh, four of which we've done already. We'll now move on to talk about the further development of the Baha'i World Center, social issues, and the relationship uh, with uh, the United Nations. Like Shoghi Effendi, the House of Justice has worked to secure ownership of sites associated with the central figures of the faith, such as the house in which Abdul Baha lived in Akka, and to extend and beautify the gardens surrounding the Baha'i shrines in Haifa and Bachi. More dramatic, however, has been its construction of a large stately building to serve as its own seat in Haifa, and the extensive project, now nearing completion, to build centres for the study of texts and for the International Teaching Centre along an arc on Mount Carmel. A large library is also planned for the future. This is a photograph of the completed seat of the Universal House of Justice, which is quite close by to the Shrine of the Bab. The Baha'i teachings advocate a thorough reconstruction of human society, but until recently practical work to implement a new social order was largely confined to certain areas of Baha'i community life, particularly education and the ongoing endeavour to free Baha'is from all forms of racial and religious prejudice so as to foster a genuinely unified community. Otherwise, Baha'i activity was more concerned with the expansion and administrative consolidation of the faith. This situation has changed quite dramatically in recent years, partly no doubt in response to the material needs of the large numbers of new Baha'is in the poor rural areas of the Third World. By the 1970s, there was an increasing number of local Baha'i initiatives in literacy training, health education and rural development. In, 1880, in 1983, the House of Justice established a Haifa-based Office of Social and Economic Development to provide a greater measure of international coordination and cooperation. Local development programs have since proliferated. Like earlier educational and medical projects in Iran, these are generally non-sectarian in orientation and are geared to the whole community, not just to the Baha'is. They include a wide range of educational facilities, from village tutorial schools, teaching basic literacy, to a Baha'i university in Bolivia, uh, established in 1985 rural health schemes and institutes to train and empower rural women. The emphasis has been on human resources and communal self-development rather than on major financial investment. In addition to material development, the Baha'is have also concerned themselves with cultural matters, most particularly in parts of Latin America, where they have contributed to the life of Amerindian cultures as with the use of Baha'i radio stations to foster indigenous music. Another aspect of this more socially activist stance is the major emphasis placed by the House of Justice on Baha'i involvement with environmental issues. Baha'is played a prominent part in the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992 and were the only religious non-governmental organisation to make a formal presentation to it. Also of note is the recent establishment of the European Baha'i Business Forum in 1990, which among other activities has organised conferences on business ethics. Another Baha'i activity that has now assumed far greater prominence is the public advocacy of the peace programme presented by the teachings of Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha. This was given great emphasis in 1985 with the publication of The Promise of World Peace by the Universal House of Justice. 
addressed to the peoples of the world. This statement was extensively distributed, including formal presentations to many public figures, insisting on the impressive in on the imperative necessity of working towards peace on the lines of the Baha'i program. The House also pointed to the present positive trends towards greater global and regional unity and to the increased concern with peace issues among non-governmental organizations and others. It also warned against the destructive impact of despair and the uncritical acceptance of human aggression as a supposedly natural trait. A similar document, The Prosperity of Humankind, described those elements of social development that are conducive to the material and spiritual advance of civilization. That was released in 1995. Involvement with the United Nations. During the guardianship of Sheikh Effendi, contacts between the Baha'is and both the League of Nations and the United Nations had been actively encouraged. An international Baha'i Bureau was established to liaise with the former in 1925, and a body representative of all the then existing National Spiritual Assemblies, named the Baha'i International Community, was affiliated with the United Nations in 1948. Baha'i involvement with the UN and its agencies increased enormously from the 1960s onwards, reflecting the growing numerical strength of the Baha'i community internationally, as well as its increasing concern with development issues. The persecution of the Baha'is in Iran since 1979 has also done much to deepen Baha'i links with the United Nations. The enhancement of the Baha'i relationship with the UN has been a continuing objective of the Universal House of Justice, which has encouraged grassroots Baha'i support for various UN projects, as well as making a number of initiatives through the Baha'i international community. A permanent Baha'i office was established at the UN in New York in 1967. Since then, the Baha'i international community has gained consultative status as a non-governmental organization with the UN's Economic and Social Council and the UN Children's Fund, as well as working relationships with various other UN bodies. It has also established a second office in Geneva and become extensively involved with UN work relating to literacy, human rights, primary health care, combating racism and women's issues. Offices of the uh, Baha'i International Community concerned with public information, the environment and the advancement of women have also been established. The persecution of Baha'is in several countries has also been brought before the UN and international, has, international action has been brought to bear. This has been most marked in relation to the massive persecution of the Baha'is in Iran following the establishment of the Islamic revolutionary regime in 1979. UN pressure has been directed towards the Iranian government to prevent attacks on the Baha'is, seemingly with success. Baha'i UN contact, contacts have also led to increasing collaboration with other non-governmental organizations, such as the Worldwide Fund for Nature Network on Conservation and Religion and the Advocates for African Food Security lessening the burden for women, uh, of which the Baha'i International Community was a founding member. Such collaboration is necessarily restricted, however, by the Baha'i's insistence on remaining uninvolved in partisan political issues. So thank you for listening, and particular thanks to my patrons, Ian Palin and Tricia Williams. If you want to, you're very welcome to support my channel. Uh, subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. I'll try to answer any questions either on Patreon or a future video. And if you want to support the growth of the channel, you can do so uh, either via Patreon or PayPal. Links below. Uh, thank you again and have a good day.